All right, we're back on it. Pulling a couple things. We're gonna get this tray out. So I forgot as part of the service, um, I wanna do the blower cleaning for the high voltage battery. Oh yeah. Take out the seatbelt. Okay, I'll reach it from the front. Push it a little and we'll get it out of the, out of the little spot there. Okay, let's go ahead. I guess I gotta move that front seat a little bit. Okay. Got it. All right, so we'll have to reset those clips onto yeah. there. We'll get them. getting those clips straightened out too. Oh, right. Yeah, that one's got a 10. This one probably will work all right. You want air? What you want? No, I need a 12. Quarter inch? Mm, doesn't matter. Gotcha. Wrench or socket? Uh, socket. Okay. Just make sure I got what I thought. I don't know if you want to get this for your video, but let them know that there's a bolt in here. Yeah, you go, I'm gonna watch. Oh, it's buried way back in there, huh? Yeah. I think you need an extension? No, I just need a flashlight to see. Okay, the light. Hidden way down in there. Maybe you're not need the extension. I see right now. Need one, I got gotcha. you. Okay, there that be. Okay, I missed that. So that comes up straight out of there. Okay. So like this? Yep, yeah, up. What else you want? Do you have the panel tool or do I have it? I have it. You have the panel tool or do? Uh a good question. I have it. Let's see, we got one more to do. I'm going to put that here. Working it. Okie dokie. I'm going to take this off. That way you could access these bolts. Okay. This in 
these. One, two. Mm -hmm. And then you can. You want the connector? Yeah. You might need to put the two. Yeah, exactly. I saw that. It might be easier if you unclip it first. See tool? if I can massage this out of there. Otherwise, we'll use the panel tool. But you got it. What I usually do is I go like this. Like that. Give both. It's a little over the top, I can see it. Sneak it, sneak it. There's that black harness in there. I'm talking really more to the camera. Alrighty, gotcha out. So, wasn't that dirty or something that had like yeah, a lot of not terrible and stuff? Yeah, but it's gonna get cleaned. Let me do, uh, let me just get some of these clips. So these are the clips that are, they're notorious to pop out this out of the plastic rather than out of the metal. So I'm gonna look, looks like this one's got all of them, but the other side's gonna be missing these. All right, so just get them reset back in there. Probably could have used a little TLC on getting those off, but it's two different ways to do it. You either get the panel tool under there and get pressure in the right spot and you can pop them out right or otherwise you yank them out and then you can get at the clips easier and you just reset them like this that one problem one I'll show you what I would do with that so that one clip that was really tough this is my go-to method this clip will not be reusable no problem so I have some so I junk this one, I get a new one, put it in there. Cleaning, cleaning. Clean each one. Every single one. The other wire brush works better. Or not the other the other ones, the the saw the painter's brush kind of. Oh okay. I've got smaller brushes too. If we want those. Remember these? Because why like doing these because it's like break time for a bit. Oh, you get to sit down, slack off. You take your little break time and put it in the clip. Yeah. Okay. There we go. You want some air? 
We'll give it some air. <laughs> we'll be ready when you're ready. Works good. All right, so that's the Yonke that came out. Dump it in the trash, give it one last, blow it out with the nozzle. And then what I'm gonna work on right now is getting it lifted. So I'm gonna hit the pinch welds to this point with the jack. As you can see, trying to see. Oh, and these, so it doesn't spool up. So I'm just using the uh, pinch pinch weld lift point right here, and then I'm while the jack is here, I'm going to slide the jack stand further under that other structural part of the unibody. So those are my points. We'll get that up. We'll get some of the bottom work going. All right. So like I was saying, use the pinch weld get under here. like to get one more tooth so I'm gonna just pump the handle a little more and that then as always set the jack stand get it a nice spot I'm still happy with that location and then I'm just gonna leave the jack kind of high with the handle up so now I can start doing some of the stuff that needs to be done on the bottom oil transaxle and the coolants just gonna be a little bit messy all right, so de-dustified, nicer. That one's, we're gonna jam that one in a minute. But here are the fluids. So the Toyota Super Long Life coolant. Um, this is the, Toyota doesn't make coolant antifreeze. So this is the equivalent. We got the Mobile One, Zero uh, W20, and then it actually takes Toyota WS, World Standard Fluid but um, this one meets that requirement. So I didn't actually get time to get the WS. So if you look on here, Toyota WS, right? Okay, so we're good on these. And then the oil filter. Um, this is our engine coolant. This over here is our inverter coolant. They both have, they're totally separate. They have their own pumps, they have their own reservoirs, they, have their, they don't even touch. So there's two different ways to drain it. And then um, here's your brake fluid, as you can see. which actually looks a little lower than I would have expected. Um, that's probably because it's charged up the accumulator. So I'm going to take a look at that while I'm down there. Um, so we're going to get ready to drain some fluids. Yeah, yeah. And definitely would be worth, you know, taking a little look down in here, making sure that nothing's gone into the actual duct. I could clean that a little. Because that's going right into the HV battery. Now, because we're not doing anything with the cables, we don't need to take the high voltage system down. Um, but there's the disconnect. Fun fact, this is kind of interesting. Um, when you go to unbolt this battery case, you see all these nuts and studs, and then you see this, and you're like, what the heck is this? The, this is actually... Um, you're supposed to use the disconnect as a tool to remove this so that way when somebody doesn't know how to remo remove this they realize oh I'm supposed to have that out so at least if that confuses them this little stud right here at the end of the disconnect is the tool to remove this little orange thing so don't take any of it off but in the case that you had to disassemble disassemble your battery case that is hopefully the last Possible Japanese fail-safe to make sure that somebody doesn't get in too far while it's still live. Kind of fun. Uh, let's get this motor back in here. You deal with the bolts, I got the connectors. Of 
course, I'm going to ruin my video with my fingers in there. You can see, don't forget about that guy there. I'm trying to do it without messing up the video. Okay. Coming. Gobble. You only need, you want you want one and I'll take one. Uh oh, the gloves are off. Now you know it's getting serious. Mine's maybe started. Yep. Nice. We're rolling. Got a bunch of trim to reassemble. I got the connectors. I didn't get that upper one in the corner though. Which one? That one, you got it. Okay, we're good. All right. A lot of little stuff to put together. Tree clips. Okay. No. Remember, you got these clipped in. Yeah, clipped. Yep, all the backs are ready. You better believe it. Doki, big panel. This one in first. Put this one in there. That one needs a little finesse, huh? A little finesse. Oh, right there. Maybe right there. That seems about right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna push down and lock in. Another lock with the visual. Missed one of the little tabs. No, it's only two. I thought it was with another one. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, that's good. Okie dokie. You have a magnetic that, socket? That 112. Said? I was thinking, I probably have a magnetic socket, but worst case, we could tape it. Set it up in there. Go, put it in there. Right, and then there you go for your magnetic socket. You finish up stuck to my glove. There you go. Now that bolt won't fall down in the crack. All right, there's the rig. I'll bring it down in there. Don't you criticize my special service tool now. <laughs> oh, my, it failed? No way. No chance that failed. You want your magnetic socket, but you can't have it. Tape it. Oh, let me see how I fit. 
you want to do it all by hand, huh? Okay. Ratchet or should you just gun it? No, I think you're good. Punch All right. That's good. Yeah. Well, as good as you can get. All right, I'm fixing the flap. Then we got a lot of stuff to do back here. Big piece. Big piece. Give you a little stuff. Here's this one. I'm passing right through. That cheek, I need to put that first. Okay. Oh, one more bolt. Okay, I'm switched. Flappers. So oh, I think it's one. It was like that. Yep, that's what I'm saying. So put the clips on this too, huh? Yeah, I put them all. All the clips are on now. Too tough to work one handed, I tell you what. That was the bigger clip. That's gonna be sweet. All right, looking nice. Think that one didn't hold? No. All right. Yeah, I think it held. I guess it. Yeah. Uh, the Velcro's lost some of its yeah. stick. I oh. see. It's gonna have to work, right? It's gonna work just fine. Okay. No, yeah, I do. I do. It's gonna be just fine. Okay. Get the big tray. And then I make sure I put all the customer stuff back where it was. I think I'll get rid of the rock for him. Unstuckified. Okay. Okay. Lock. Lock. Get the mat in there. The mat's a little dirty. But he gets good use out of the vehicle. For sure. Oops, don't forget the towel. The towel was under there. I'm going back in. Towel in case of emergencies. It's right in there. Okay. We'll get the seat belts look, loop back through like this. Close the seats up. We're on to fluids. Okay, all the battery work is done. So, moving on to the fluids. So it's lifted. We're gonna identify the drain points. All right, so it's a Prius, which means it's all cladded up. 
especially for efficiency. So we got to pop this, uh, all this plastic's got to come out. You can see there's a whole bunch of uh, 10 millimeters that we're going to go after. And then a lot of these clips. So I'll show you how. So the deal on the clips, let's just pick one. We'll go with this one. I prefer the right angle pick, but it does take a little, little finesse on these. All right, then that clips out. You can see that one's already seen better days. So it's a decent chance that some of these clips are gonna break. And I do have some like this, but not very many left. All right, I keep them organized in my little tray. Just keep popping them out like that. Lift would have been good for this aspect of the job. I keep, uh, a lift is on my list of things to get, but it keeps getting pushed down the list. Perfect. So let me get all those. Oh, and fun little detail. So if I was just gonna do an oil change, I could just undo this door, but because we're doing all those fluids, we're gonna take off the whole thing. All right, so a bunch of clips. And then, uh, as you can see, maybe hard to, hard to get the lighting right, but some bolts up here in the front. Yank those out right now. All the clips I got right there, but then I got some uh, bolts here, like this. This. Oh, actually, that one's not there. This. So I'll get a few more bolts out, and then I'll be ready to drop. And not super shocking, but uh, these are pieces of the cover that should be molded right here. But it's been uh, bottomed out a few times, so they're kind of coming apart in pieces. So not not a real big deal, but this this area takes a little bit of a beating here. All right, so this should be the last one. And once again, coming off kind of in pieces. So, oh, looks like oh, I missed one clip. See that clip? Expect it to happen to you. Now that cover's down. Get it out of here. You see it? Yeah, possibly. So look, a little, a little uh, small amount of seepage here on that transaxle. It doesn't look like it's coming from anywhere except maybe just where the case halves come together. Um, but for that, I'm not gonna make a big thing. I'm gonna clean it up. If it was leaking really bad. Um, I know some of these transaxles are being sealed. You can see the RTV right there. Um, but not a big deal. Although it's good that we're going to change this fluid because now we'll make sure it's topped off all the way in case that has lost some minimal amount. So here comes a fluid explanation. All right, here we go. We're going to go from most simple to most complex. Oil drain plug right there to give you a reference oil filter right there then uh, here's the transaxle so the drain plug is this big Allen right here as you can see for reference right under there so we're gonna drain that uh, that's that's a transaxle coolant or inverter coolant I should say so we're gonna drain that and then the fill for that is up here so inverter and that drain plug I just showed you is inverter obviously you know where the oil fill is right there um, then next we'll go for engine coolant engine coolant housing engine coolant drain and that one can be a little tricky um, if you look right here that yellow petcock that's on the radiator, so like here's for reference. Right there, driver's side. That one we're actually gonna have to run the car and burp the coolant uh, for bubbles to make sure the thermostat works. The other ones are a little more minor. And then, um, last but not least, the actual transaxle oil. Um, this was something that was a little confusing. In the service manual, it calls for, in, in PS, side note, see these hoses right here? 
that's where the inverter coolant enters the transaxle. So we call it inverter coolant, but it's a little bit more than that. It's cooling the motor generator windings inside. So for the transaxle, it got a little confusing. In the service manual, it calls to change the transaxle CVT fluid and the differential fluid, but they're the same. So that is, this one's gonna be a little harder to see, so let me zoom your way out. Okay, I'm coming under the car, under the car, under the car, right below that CV axle, that Allen right there is the drain, and then up there, that one is the fill, which is also how you check the level. So I'm going to pop that out, drain the fluid, pop all these out, and drain all the appropriate fluids. And then pretty quickly going to get the inverter slash motor generator windings cooling plug back in. Um, well, I'll get them all back in and then start filling. Crap, my Rooney. Can you shoot some paper towels? Yeah. The white one? Yeah, just cheapies. The cheapy cheapies. Yeah, just chuck it. Just chuck it, little buddy. By the way, if you was able to like kind of manage it, like mm -hmm. it would have, it would have, it would have been the very good quality thing. It's more guaranteed that you would never mess up. Yeah, no, totally. He just threw it in the towel right away. He got he got somebody to tell him what he wanted to hear, and then it was done. Are gonna have any more discussion about it? Because he would still recheck, but he will recheck at the appropriate time. Yeah, then, not ex not a, not obsessively. Yeah, maybe like twice. Okay, done. And he knows that he would never screw right. up. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, but that ship has sailed. Wow, that is tight. I got it. No. I got it. Tight like, the filter or the... It's the housing, yeah. Filter housing. I'd like to catch that on video. You want to kneel and get all messed up? Huh? Had enough. You want a video oh, yeah, You want a video Oh, I'll tape you, yeah. I'll tape you, yeah. Hey, you tape me. Right here is my phone and the orange thing. You see it? You see it right there? Yeah. Just don't press stop. You can redo it. It's still on, right? Yeah, it's still running. Record button. Timer's going up. What's that? Timer's going up. Timer's going up. Yeah, it's going up. Yeah. All right. So this one is really stuck. Okay. That one, I got it that time. But I had the thing fly off a few times. Probably wouldn't try to get that off without the right socket. Okay. Catching it good. Yeah, it's a little dirty. Alright, so no biggie on this one. I'm gonna just replace the filter, O-ring, and put it back in. So let's pause. All right, so new filter, junk the old O-ring. Oil the new, new O-ring up because you have oily hands. So get up like this. And then, let me get this back in there. Get this tight and move on to the next fluid. As you can see, we're putting the oil filter back on. Yeah, I annotate this. Talk about it. What are you doing here? So first he does it hand tight. If the oil filter feels kind of tight, just uh, do it with the ratchet. It's supposed to feel like that. Just make sure that it goes in straight. Nice and straight. Now usually there's a torque spec for this, but yes. we usually go hand tight, especially with experience. 
Just don't over tighten it because it's going to be very hard to take it off next time. Like how it was for me? Yes, like that. But I got my socket a little stuck, so that's kind of what I was going to play around with the ratchet. Uh, one trick of that, because it does get stuck sometimes, is going back and forth with the ratchet. Just make sure that you don't loosen it, but you'll, you'll hear the click once it... Yeah, close, close. This one. This is the aftermarket tool, too. Yeah, come on, sweetheart. You get it now. Okay, that was just about there. So he's playing with it. Make sure that... Moving it out. Ah, did you see that? I pushed it back in. This one is a little bit more of a pain in my butt than I would like to admit. There we go. Those tools, you could buy them really nice from Snap On. Mm -hmm, or, but that's not where I got mine. Or you could get an AutoZone or something. But the Snap On one is usually better. But that's only recommended if you're doing this professionally. Okie dokie. Let me evaluate that little crush washer. If it's not perfect, I got new ones. Oh, this one's really good. I like it. One time use, but I like this one because it's got a little rubber coating, so it's going to be at least two time use. So okay. usually it's recommended that you replace these every time? That's a the nice gasket. one. Though. That one's nicer than mine. Mine's all metal. That one has rubber on it. Okay, and then here's a... This is 30 foot-pounds usually, but... Click, did you hear it? Click. Okay, what do you think? Let me, you know what? Let me drain this um, oil and then we'll come back. So. All right, so here we go on the transaxle. I popped the fill, as you can see, and uh, a little bit came out, so it's actually maybe a little over, overfilled technically. So here comes the drain, and I take a guess of where I need to be here. It's going to come out quick because the ATF is thin. Yeah, I'm going to move it back. Ooh, That's a mess. Came out fast and dirty. Pretty dirty. And it stinks. <laughs> Alright, so I'll let that drain and then I'll put the plug back in. Give me one second. Alright. Cap the drain. And I got some mess to clean up, and now I gotta start pumping uh, ATF up into that one up there. That's gonna be a pain. I got it. Alright, this, this job is kind of a pain, but I've got this transfer pump so I can put the hose in there. And then I can start pumping away, pumping, pumping, pumping. And that's probably going to be about full. But if it takes one more, it'll take one more. Yeah, so see how it's flowing? Eh, it maybe was flowing. I'm going to shoot one more and then plug it. All right, ATF is full. Plug is in. Time for the coolant. So the cap is off in the top. As you can see, this is the inverter coolant, and it's gonna come shooting out. Three, two, one. And I guess my numbers are a little off. Here's your inverter coolant coming out. All right, so really not a ton comes out of there. A gallon or so. It's dripping, we're done. So I'm gonna plug this, and then I'm gonna start filling that up. And then last, I'll do the engine coolant. And the, these these Allens are 10 millimeter, FYI. Oh. All right, so we're gonna start just filling the inverter coolant. We're gonna have to turn the car on or at least the ignition. But for now, we'll get some in there to start using the coolant funnel. Go ahead and gluggy gluggy gluggy. And this will just start bubbling down and working some air out. And we'll have to come back to it. We're gonna do the same thing with the uh, engine coolant in a minute here. Pause it right there. Once it gets a little more full, it's okay. We're gonna go right to the F for full. A little bit over is better. Yeah, because it's gonna take some in. All right, so that, for now, I'm gonna leave that. Now it's plugged off, and I'm gonna jump onto draining the radiator. 
All right, and I just put oil in it, P.S. But that's, you gotta know how to change oil if you're gonna do this job, so I didn't highlight that. So now I'm gonna drag this over here. Remember that petcock? I'm gonna start draining the petcock here, and I can just loosen that counterclockwise if I can. Oh, that was tight. Right, I'm just gonna unthread it partially. And then the coolant will start coming out. That one might take a little while, but I got some other work to do on top. All right, all the fluids are drained. I tightened up the petcock. The plugs are tight. We got mostly coolant in here. We got quite a bit of coolant in here. Um, we're gonna just do key on, engine off, get my coolant funnel in there. I'm gonna have the coolant on standby. Um, see how low this goes. So we're just doing key on, right? Ready? Yep. Oh, the wipers look good. All right, let's see if some goes down. Maybe not too much, huh? At least not yet. Meanwhile, we're sitting here. Yeah, it might have it might have bled yeah. some out. All right, so well, if that one doesn't go down that much, that's okay. I think the next thing we could do. Uh, I checked the oil already, 4.4 quarts, and. We could, uh, I might jump this funnel back over to the engine side because we're going to start the car and put it in maintenance mode. So yeah, mode? let's do it. I'm going to tape you from the back seat. Talk me through, talk me through. All right, so you have the car in part. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, first we'll reset the maintenance like this. Yeah, right thank here. you. Redo the range. So side. you put in kilometers per hour. Kilometers. And then you put A. Kilometers, trip A. And then you hold the kilometer button. And it's resetting the data. Okay, I'm gonna, I know I couldn't see that button, so let me jump in there real quick. So you held it the whole time until it went off, and the kilometer button was here. Ready? Okie dokie. There you go, look, resetting it again. So okay. See. Holding that, then turn the key on, and keep holding key. it, and then you can let it go. In the maintenance mode. Yeah. You go, you hit the accelerator pedal twice. On gas, park, gas. And then you go neutral. Neutral. And then you go park again and do it twice again. Maintenance mode. All right. Let me check. Uh, hold up. The uh, inverter's got to get fluid. You, you're good. You saw that inverter pulled dry pretty quick. So we're going to get some coolant here. Yeah, it I sucked it right up. Yeah, I guess that's what I expected to happen. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna keep uh, feeding it. Probably, I think I got enough in the funnel to top that off. So just took that to get the water pump to run. The wipers aren't hitting, they look good. Okay. All right, we're gonna cap it there for a moment. All right, tell me about maintenance mode one more time. Talk me through it. I saw you do it, right? You did key on. No, no, just tell me. Oh, key uh, on. Key on. Yeah. Ignition on. Yep. So two times on the start button. Okay. And then you press accelerator twice. Press on. the ignition once, once, without your foot on the brake pedal so it doesn't start. Yes. Gas pedal, gas pedal. Put in neutral. Neutral. Gas pedal, gas pedal. Gas pedal, gas pedal. And then park again. Press park. And then gas pedal, gas pedal. Gas pedal, gas pedal. Okay, we got this. Purpose of maintenance mode to keep the engine running. Keeping the engine running that we can uh, have this coolant get warm enough for the thermostat to open. When the thermostat opens, the coolant will not only be in the engine, it'll start pumping through the radiator and any air pockets, we can get those out. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to basically leave it running. It looks like this is full and then maybe even a little extra full. And I'm just going to transfer this over. Leave it running until it gets up to full operating temperature. Um, you could turn the heat on to check it, but it's not really necessary. So we're just going to let it do its thing. 
we'll start seeing um, this level drop down when the thermostat opens or you can try to grab the radiator hoses but they're hard to reach on this one so we're gonna let it get nice and warm all right so we kept an eye on this it pulled a little bit more a few times when it's little electric water pump ran um, and this one is the one you gotta be really careful of so I've got it overfilled on purpose just laying there I'm gonna keep it running for probably another 10 minutes eventually the thermostat will open my hope is that I'll hear the electric fan kick on when I know the fan kicked on I know that the thermostats open and I'll make sure I get it to the line so I'm gonna probably have it a little overfilled um, but I can always suck a little bit out with my little extractor when I know it's good and then I'll give this car a nice drive and I'll come back and I'll make sure all the fluids hold and they're definitely at the full and then I'm gonna come under here I put the cover back on but I'm gonna really degrease this good and then check it one more time for leaks um, and then we should be good after a little road test and there's your 100 slash 120k service